Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part C of angels and the in the New Testament. Uh, in this series, this is probably going over it for a second time, but uh, uh, sometimes it's good to know Here's, here are things a couple of different times. I suspect that what angels have done in the past, the Lord will have them do in the future. Time will tell. All right, so let's take a look. New Testament. And oh, by the way, I am on... Uh, G, and then you take after G, there's an A, and then after the A, there's a uh, B, and that's where I'm going to be when uh, you know who kicks me off the internet. So that, uh, yeah. I mean, they've been dinging me for old videos. I mean, I had a video that was been up for, I forget, three, four, five years, and I got a strike for it. I'm like, really, dude? Three, four, five years old, huh? Well, you know, we changed our terms of, uh, you know, uh, service. Yeah. Yeah. So, evidently, uh, the Bible is... Uh, Take, uh, take the word eight, like you're eating, uh, eight, and then uh, put an H in front of it. Yeah. So, yeah, you get the idea. Yeah, I'm making this for, uh, this is for YouTube. So, such a wonderful platform. I, I'm so happy to be here. Yes, indeed. But uh, for the day that I'm not, well... You'll know where I'm at. All right, let's go to the Bible. All right, let's go to the book of Acts, uh, chapter 5. We're going to skip around. I'm not going to try to put these in any particular uh, order for as far as time. I'm trying to get as much done as I can. But uh, so let's go to the book of Acts. Now, this is the only time, this is what you could call true communism. The only true communism on this planet is uh, probably ants and bees. And in the original church, people, everything, everybody had things in common, which is what communism is supposed to be. But uh, that's not what it is. You know, when they're when when the political people talk about communism, uh, no, they're talking about the very very wealthy having everything, and then everybody else fighting for pieces of bread. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they don't they don't fight over pieces of bread because they own the bakery and everything else. But back in the old days, the uh, church people sold their possessions and shared with everybody, the apostles and what have you. So, all right, let's go to Acts chapter 5, verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it. You know, they had a secret going there. And brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So here it is. They sold something. They're giving the apostles uh, part of the money. And they're going to lie about it. Okay, I sold this for 100 bucks, and I'm going to keep 20 and give the apostles 80 and tell them that's what I really sold it for was for 80 Verse 3, but Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart 
to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land. Uh, now, people will tell you that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to, you know, uh, is not part of the Godhead. And they'll say, oh, well, you know, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, they'll say, well, you know, the Holy, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is just like electricity. It's there and it works, but it's really not alive. It's not really a person. Well, how do you lie to electricity? How do you, how does that work? See, the Bible teaches that man was made in God's image. And the Bible teaches that man has a body Man has a soul, man has a spirit, Holy Spirit, and that man was made in God's image. So you got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then they'll say, oh, that's the Trinity, a three-headed God. No, that's their idea of, of the Godhead, you know. And I don't use the word Trinity because it's not in the Bible, but the word Godhead is. How do you lie to electricity? You don't. But here it says they lied to the Holy Ghost. So Peter says, you know, you lied to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land. Verse 4, whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. See, Peter wouldn't say that he lied unto God unless the Holy Ghost was God. So, you know, keep that in mind. And if they would have said, well, you know, I sold it for 100, here's 80, I'm going to keep 20 for myself. That would have been fine. I mean, it was theirs, you know. But being the fact that they lied about it, bad news. I mean, it was a it was a serious thing, you know. And here it is, they're doing giving something to the Lord's apostles to, to divvy up to the, you know, those that are of less fortunate. But uh, well, listen to this. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. Uh, so he died. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered under her and said, well, he's saying, tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, yea, for so much. Ooh, bad news. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost, and the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. Would to God we had this kind of power going on today, huh? And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders, you know, miracles, right? Uh, many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. See, they're in the temple. Solomon's porch is by, you know, it's part of the, it's the court, the temple of, the court of the temple. And of the rest, durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And the, and believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women. Uh, Bob's note here. I am guessing 
that when the man of sin comes, the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the beast, by those are four names for the same being. Uh, when that being comes, the church, there's going to be an outpouring of the Spirit. And I believe the church is going to have power, but I don't think it's going to be like what uh, what's going on in like Pentecostal churches today. You know, people slithering on the floor, spouting a bunch of gibberish. Now, I, I think there's going to be some a really powerful outpouring of the Spirit. And that's, and I should read the book of Joel. The Lord is going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. Well, all doesn't always mean all. And people argue that with me. Well, Paul says that uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Did Jesus sin? Bible, Bible says he was without sin. So all does not always mean all. You have to look at the context and who the who is being spoken to and by whom is doing the speaking. So, all right, so the apostles are doing signs and wonders. 15, insomuch as they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Hmm. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they healed, and they were healed every one. Boy, I'll tell you what, uh, those that were running the temple, if you know, catch my drift. Um, how do you explain that away? You know, uh, you know that's the thing. You uh, you go to the, the the people running the temple. I don't even want to say that word of the people that were in the temple running it. But um, and you ask them, "Hey, my brother is sick. Here he is. Can you pray for him so that he'll be healed?" And they do. Nothing happens. And then you know you go to the apostles. And then he's, they're healed instantly. Who are you going to believe? The people in the temple that rejected uh, you-know-who or the apostles? Well, you know me. I, I pick the apostles, but uh, yeah. Verse 17. Oh, here we go. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is of, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. Now the Sadducees were the, uh, they performed the priestly duties in the temple. So, they're, they're all unhappy because all these people are getting healed. All these miracles are getting done. So what is their solution? Do they fall down? at their feet and say, Peter, please tell me about how to be saved and, and how to, you know, tell me about Jesus. No, no, no. They don't do that. Verse 18. And they laid their hands on the apostles and put them into the common prison. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what they do. Yeah, we can't have this stuff going on. We we got to get we got to shut these guys up. Let's put them in prison. <laughs> but the Lord had another plan. Verse nineteen. But the angel of the Lord, ah, there's an angel, touched by an angel, right? What a stupid show that was. I knew a girl that liked watching that. I used to just shake my head. I couldn't watch it. But, hey, 
anything from Hollywood, right? But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, so the angel, this is what the angel saying, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Oh yeah, the Sadducees want to shut you up, but that ain't in the plan. So get you out, go to the temple and start talking. That's the Bob translation. Verse 21, And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. So here it is. They're going to have a meet. You know, the, uh, the high priest is going to have a meeting with all the, all the important people, right? Well, all those that thought they're, they're important. Verse 22, But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut with all safety, and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they doubted, doubted of them, Whereunto this would grow. So they're like, uh, what's going on here? You know, we got the guards, we got the temple, you know, the, the prison's doors are shut, but somehow they got out. Verse 25. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. What? Oh, yeah. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. Oh, yeah. If only the rulers of today had that kind of fear, huh? And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Ha, ha. Did we not straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And what name is that? Jesus. That name. Yeah. Not Yeshua HaMashiach. Did we not straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Well, if the shoe fits, wear it. I mean, after all, Pilate tried to release uh, somebody. But uh, the you-know-whos wouldn't have it. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye... Now who's, who's Peter talking to here? He's not talking to the Romans. No, no, no. He's talking to those people in the temple. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. You think they would listen, but no, uh-uh. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. That's a very important verse right there. God gives the Holy Ghost to those that obey him. You know, even Satan believes in God. I've heard so many people say, well, you know, just as long as you believe, well, Satan believes in God, but does Satan obey God? Uh, no. You know, when you believe the Lord and you trust the Lord and you love the Lord, you're going to obey. And then there's people who will tell you, oh, well, 
Oh, you're earning your salvation. They call that lordship salvation. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Do you love Jesus? What commandments? The two commandments. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. Boy, that's real hard, huh? If you don't love the Lord, well, no problem. Don't keep any commandments. Do, do what you want to do. Uh, take, a, take a hint from the witches. Uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. You know, do whatever you want to do. If it feels good, do it. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Yeah, if you don't like what somebody's saying, kill them, right? Works every time. Worked, worked, worked to shut up Jesus, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Verse 34. Then stood there up one of the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law. Now, he, he doesn't do medical procedures on the law. Uh, you know. Uh, nowadays, if you want to get a doctorate degree, you're talking uh, eight years of college. I don't know how many it was back in these days, but, you know, two years of college as an associate's, four as a bachelor's, uh, six as a master's, and eight is a doctorate. So, a doctor of the law. I guarantee you this guy knew the Bible, at least the Old Testament, inside and out. Oh, yeah. So, and I've read a little bit of the writings of Gamaliel, believe it or not. The guy had some pretty good understanding, in my opinion. Uh, according to legend, he became a believer. Because uh, he was the one that taught Paul, believe it or not. Not about Jesus, but about the law. You know, the, the, the law is Leviticus. So, then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people. This guy commanded respect. And he commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. So, here it is. You guys go over there. I'm going to speak to these guys over here. And he said unto them, so Gamaliel's talking to the council. Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain, and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. They were brought to nothing. After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him, he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. You know, if what they're doing is, is of men, it's going to come to nothing. Nothing will become of it. Verse 39, but if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, yeah, this is the book of Acts. You know, uh, your pre-trib rapture people, they don't want to hear this stuff. Uh-uh, no, uh-uh. God would never, never let us get beaten. God's not a wife beater. We're the bride of Christ. We're the, we're the church. God would never let us do this. God's not a wife beater. Well, he let the apostles get beaten. Stephen got stoned. And no, he didn't buy he didn't buy some good weed and smoke it. 
No, he got stoned. But it wasn't weed. And to him they agreed when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they not should not speak in the name of Jesus and let him go. Wow. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Boy, you don't hear this stuff taught in churches today, do you? No, uh-uh. They, they were rejoicing that they were counted worthy to, to get beaten and told, don't, don't preach in the name of Jesus. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Now, I'm sure this council uh, asked the apostles, or Peter, uh, how did you guys get out of the prison? Oh, an angel came and got us. Yeah, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure that went over real well. Oh, yeah, an angel came and got you. Uh, yeah, right. You know, they probably thought somebody paid off one of the uh, guards. Now, a little note here in Acts 23, verse 8. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection. See, they don't believe there's a, uh, an afterlife. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. See, the Sadducees don't believe in angels. So, you know, <laughs> if they were asked... Uh, how, hey, Peter, how did you guys get out of prison? Oh, yeah, an angel came. And I'm, you know, the Pharisees uh, or the Sadducees were probably rolling their eyes. But, uh, yeah, so you get, you know, you get the idea, right? So that was probably an interesting uh, conversation that they had. So, alrighty, I guess I'm going to make this a, uh, the end of this part of this study. I'm going to probably chop it down into uh, chapters. We'll just do Acts ch chapter 5 on this one. So, like I say, I'm on the other, the other place in case uh, I'm no longer allowed to teach on where this is now so just keep that in mind a little bit more freedom in things that you can uh talk about so all right all blessing praise glory and honor in jesus precious name all glory and honor to him in jesus name amen